So iX Tech has sent out their new microphone, the iX dash mic zero one. I think that means that there's probably going to be new microphones released in the future uh, iterations and stuff. So I'm going to go ahead and get my thoughts and opinions and uh, my, I would say pros and cons of this microphone. And hopefully, you know, in the future, companies like iX Tech can continue making products like this, but as well as taking the feedback. So I'm going to go ahead and give my feedback and like I said, my thoughts and concerns and just overall opinions of this microphone. If you are interested in the sound test comparison of this microphone to other microphones that I have previously done or have in my possession, there will be an unlisted uh, video down in the description to uh, an audio test of all the microphones, just raw audio, no VSTs, no plugins or anything like that. So you can make an informed decision on your purchase if you want to pick up this microphone or maybe another one I have covered in the past. If you're looking for individual reviews of those microphones, there will be a product review playlist at the end of the video. With that being said, let's go ahead and talk about this microphone um, straight out the box. I just want to go ahead and say that I'm fairly impressed with what it comes with. It actually comes with a nice long USB type C cable. This is probably around 12 feet or something like that. I wasn't able to find the dimensions on either cable because this actually comes with an XLR cable. And I'm actually very happy that they decided to incorporate this in it. It seems like fairly nice. I would say decent quality as far as XLR cables go. Um, it's not as long, obviously, as the type C cable. So you might need to get a longer one in the future if you are changing to an XLR device. It just depends on if it's going to sit on your desk, how um, close the device is to you, etc. But this one's probably like a six foot, three foot cable or something like that, probably around a six foot. Um, but it's still nice to come in the box. I will go ahead and put on screen how much this microphone costs and this, uh, I would say, what it comes with and everything. But from the time of recording, when I first looked at this microphone, when they sent it out, it was roughly around $50 on Amazon, uh, between 50 and 60. Right now, from me checking or wherever now, the white one is around that price point where the black one is, you know, fairly, I would say closer to its original price. And on iX Tech's website, it's around 80 to $90. Um, in my personal opinion, for a microphone, even though it comes with the XLR cable and a nice long size uh, USB type C cable and the capabilities in the microphone, because I actually do like the sound of the microphone. Um, but in my personal opinion, I'm just going to tell you guys straight up, I think it costs a little bit too much in my personal, uh, I would say, opinion. I've seen the microphones, obviously, fine, fine is just like, I would say, the, the ground, I would say, zero for pricing microphones and what you can get for a good, cheap, I would say, microphone that's still going to sound good and give you a... Uh, fantastic audio quality this microphone in my personal opinion gives fantastic audio quality uh for those who are looking for this type of microphone but again in my personal opinion it's still a little bit too much even though you know it comes with both cables that you need um so i'm gonna go ahead and let you guys know uh, that straight off the bat so let's go ahead and dive into the sound test of this microphone so what you're listening to right now is the iX Tech dynamic microphone through its XLR port uh, brought into Wavelink and the dB is set to 42 uh, dB or gain on the microphone with no pre-installed plugins or presets or VSTs or anything like that. Just is just raw audio with uh, un I would say relatively un sound treated room and this is what it sounds like. The microphone is somewhat close to my PC and obviously like I said the room is not really sound treated so this is the way it sounds. I'm gonna go ahead and turn on my desk fan which is a govi smart fan and uh, it goes up to all the way to level eight but relatively i would say around level four is going to be able to best assimilate what a stream or office is wherever is going to have uh, say going on in the office as far as background noise so i'm gonna go ahead and turn that on it's blowing directly towards me and the microphone it is around a arm's length away so again this is going to assimilate i would say you know what's going on in your office or in your space or something like that again maybe you're closer to your pc or you do have a fan going on in the background maybe like a ceiling fan or something like that this is going to be i would say the more realistic scenario but like i mentioned previously this fan can go all the way to level eight so i'm gonna go ahead and turn it up to level eight and as you can probably hear this is the way it sounds and uh, any microphone, I would say, in this position or wherever, probably won't be able to reject that much, I would say, wind or gust or noise or wherever pretty good. So I'm going to turn it back down to level four. And what I'm going to do now is turn on the EQ. Now, the EQ that's being used right now is only a background noise removal supplied through uh, Elgato and its Wavelink software. This is something that I've talked about before, which is very similar to NVIDIA Broadcast. 
uh, software that has that background noise removal. It's pretty much the same thing. So if you have an NVIDIA GPU, you will be able to block that background noise like I'm doing right now. And then on top of that, I have a noise gate to help a little bit more clean up that signal. Now, this is something that I really, really like. And um, now I'm gonna move on to uh, putting on a de -esser. This is just going to uh, relieve the harshness of T's and S's that I think a lot of people should be using um, when they're recording YouTube videos and like the, 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 the noise signal and stuff like that. I've noticed in a lot of people's YouTube videos and stuff when they're using microphones, their S's and T's are really, really stressed and they don't really clean them up. So again, think about putting a, uh, I would say a de -esser on your audio. Um, even if you're streaming or something like that, you don't have to turn it up too much, but just, just a little bit always helps. Now I'm going to put on some EQ curves that can be supplied through Elgato again with the Wavelink software with their EQs directly from Elgato in their marketplace that you can down, download specifically for um, or specifically for Wavelink. You can go ahead and get it again from their marketplace. They released a video talking about it. And within the Elgato's actual EQ VSTs for the Wavelink software, um, that you can use that VST pretty much in anything. So like DaVinci Resolve or something like that, I've been able to do that. Um, but that EQ software has some presets in the marketplace where you can download for dynamic microphones. And this is one of those presets for that dynamic microphone um, setting. So this is just the way it sounds or whatever with that EQ applied. And uh, this is pretty much what I've been running for my stream setup for, I would say any of my dynamic microphones. So again, this is with those all those EQs applied. This is the way it sounds like with all the EQs applied. I'm gonna go ahead and turn up to level eight on the fan. This is the way it sounds like without no EQs or anything like that. And turning back on the EQs, this is the way it sounds with the fan on level eight. Again, just talking directly into the microphone. Now, as previously stated, I've worked with IX Tech in the past. I've covered their low profile boom arm, the pro version of the Lizard, which is perfect for sit stand desk. As you can see, the microphone was placed perfectly in the shot as well as another type of their microphone boom arm, which is the traditional scissors microphone boom arm type. And they also came out with a white variant as well as a white variant of this microphone. I'll leave it all linked in the description so you can find it there if you're interested in that variant of these products. But I go, I kind of want to just focus on this, I would say, microphone. First off, I want to kind of talk about my, I would say, cons or things that you might want to be aware of as far as purchasing this. Now, as you saw, it was on a microphone boom arm, but if you try to just to out straight out the box, put the microphone on the microphone boom arm, it's not going to fit because at least to my knowledge, there was no thread adapter that came with this microphone. So I had one lying around or wherever. And most of the time when you get uh, a microphone boom arm, they're going to come with like little thread adapters. So I'll try to leave a cheap Amazon pack aware of these down in the description, just in case maybe your microphone boom arm doesn't have this specific thread for this or maybe a different type of microphone. It's always good to have those lying around just in case you're like me who likes to switch up the microphones they use or, you know, maybe you're needing a different type of thread for something else that you're trying to do. Uh, it's just good to have those lying, uh, lying around just in case. Uh, the second, I would say con or wherever is kind of admittedly a nitpick, but I know it's important to a lot of people out there. I've mentioned this before in the past. When people are looking for aesthetically pleasing stuff to add to their setup or wherever, and they're looking for a certain care, uh, color variant, having something like this on your microphone or on a piece of product or wherever that you're selling or wherever, it's always uh, going to be a con and it's always going to be kind of at a detriment or wherever because you might lose out on some sales. It might not be a whole bunch, but you are going to lose out, so I would say, on potential customers because most people probably are not going to take the screws off or wherever of this thing and you know paint this black or in the case of the white one paint it white or gray to match their setup and i know some people are going to say again it's nitpicking but i know hundreds of content creators probably close to a thousand or wherever as far as interacting with them over the years i've been doing this since like 2014 15 as far as just in the content creation space you know uh I would say getting around or wherever working with different people talking to people talking about gear and microphones and all that stuff and like chairs and everything like that i've heard it millions of times that somebody wouldn't buy something or they were interested in how it looked but they wouldn't buy it because it had an accent piece like this now this is off red this is like burgundy but an off burgundy um i'm not sure what it looks like on the white one but in person this is off burgundy or wherever on the website and stuff like that it might look like red but again, on in person, this is like a off burgundy. And uh, I can show you guys right now 
like you have it here wherever this backdrop is red this is obviously like a burgundy ish red and uh in my personal opinion it's not aesthetically pleasing now again you can unscrew this or wherever because you have screws on the grill and screws that keep it in place to the back side of the microphone and you can obviously like i said spray paint it black or white or gray or whatever to match your setups because there's nothing else on this other than the white branding on the side that uh you know appeads i would say the aesthetic look that you're look going for because maybe you do like the sound of this microphone and that might be a drawback and that's something that i mentioned on the fine fine a6t with the smiley face on the front of their windscreen or wherever being red but regardless of what color variant you had and they had like i would say three or four maybe five color variants and no matter what color variant you got you have this big red thing on it and again i know these are companies like accent uh, accent pieces or like color themes and stuff like that but companies need to start realizing that ever since covid even before then but ever since covid people have gotten serious about the work from home setups aesthetically pleasing setups and stuff like that they've gotten the the i would say their mind in the sense of hey i'm paying money for this stuff or wherever i like my setup i like a cozy space and stuff like that i like the way stuff looks and everything in a certain way and i it's hard again for people to find brands or wherever that are not throwing just random little colors into something that they're looking for hey a solid white microphone a solid black microphone whatever it may be and when you do something like this again you're alienating some uh i would say potential like i said customer uh, base because they're like i'm not gonna go through the hassle of spray painting this or they might not even think about spray painting it they're just like man it looks cool sounds good i just don't like it you know the, the color piece and i i completely understand it i don't think it's a deal breaker for me because like i said i know i could take this off and spray paint it um but some people, like I said, they're just going to look at it and be like, pass instantly. You know what I mean? So uh, just keeping that in mind, I would say going forward, maybe for a mic two or three or something like that in the future. Um, one brand I know that kind of did it good was uh, the Go XLR company or wherever. They have their microphone, but they have little bands that can go around the microphone different colorways. So you can have your microphone be all black, all white, whatever as well as having a different accent piece or whatever to match your setup. And I think that's the way to go instead of something like this. Just my personal opinion. Um, outside of that, the last one is going to be, you probably heard it in the, and I'll say the testing or wherever, as far as the sound of it. But if you have a muddy voice, if you have a mid voice or something like that, who has uh, like a tenor voice or something like that, or a baritone or a deep, like I said, voice from bass to it, this microphone is going to be perfect. I think it sounds really good without EQs and stuff like that. Maybe just putting on a background removal or a noise removal or something like that. Um, and that's it. Maybe a little bit of noise gate, depending on your uh, your room scenario, but it's going to sound great. So streamers and all that stuff, when you hook it up to, you know, USB, very minimal changes need to be done to the audio quality of this. Outside of that, people who are, you know, don't have that voice type. Um, you're going to have to EQ that out of the microphone. Some people like it when you get just raw audio or wherever, and then you EQ it to your liking. And some people like the muddiness straight out of a microphone out of the box. So it, that's going to dictate to where if you're going to buy this or not, if you're going to sit there and like I said, EQ that out or not. It's not that hard to do. You can watch an easy tutorial on how to do it through uh, OBS or something like that, or maybe through... Um, your editing software or something to change the bands or wherever um on that you know mid to bass you know tone or whatever the treble and stuff like that you can easily eq that stuff out it's not that hard but some people are not going to go to the lengths like that they want the audio to sound just flat as possible and then add all that stuff back into uh post or while they're streaming or something like that using the software to do that and not do the i guess the reverse um, so again, that might not be something for you, but this microphone for my type of voice, for the, the bass and stuff like that in my voice, because I have a deep voice. I've been told that multiple times on the phone, in person and stuff like that, that my voice is deep. But then when I do my YouTube videos and stuff, people complain about having bass in the microphone or too much bass and stuff, stuff like that. But that's how my voice sounds. I, I can't do it. Like, look at this Adam's apple. I, I can't do it. You know what I'm saying? So uh, it's just it's just going to, again, be up to you as the content creator what you're looking for as far as sound goes. Now, most streamers probably are not gonna have a problem with it. They're just gonna hook it up to, you know, USB type C, maybe do a little EQ or something like that and just stream and be perfectly fine. Or like, uh, like I said, a voiceover or something like that. I think this microphone's good for it. 
um the one thing i do want to mention is that i probably can't show it on screen because you know it's it's just nearly impossible um but you can probably see here that there's no light pa passing through to the other side as you can see probably down here or wherever you can see light kind of passing through uh, that's because the capsule is all the way to the top of the grill so what does that mean is that you're gonna have to talk to this to the side or wherever and let you know your words and your breath and all that stuff pass this way instead of talking directly into the mic like this because the capsule is so close to the top even with the the windscreen or wherever your plosives are gonna be uh kind of bad or wherever if you do that so again with those for plosives and stuff you are going to have to talk to it at an ax off axis angle wherever something like this to where you're you know you're talking kind of directly in front of you where the microphone's off to your side or wherever and kind of catching that side projection um just to you know, mitigate that or wherever so again those are kind of my thoughts and opinions what you should use them how you should use the microphone as well as you know the kind of cons and, and stuff like that but the pros like i said it's for the price, when I saw it wherever around 50, 60 bucks or wherever, I was like, yo, this is actually pretty good with coming with the XLR cable and a USB type C. If you can get it for that price point, and I would say only get it for that price point. Um, that's just because there are other microphones out there that are around that price point. Like I hate to bring it up, but the Mayano microphone has a USB type C and XLR port or wherever on the back. But the the microphone that I'm talking about is the Mayano PD 200X, I think it's called, or wherever I did a review on. That one actually has software. Mayano's, you know, USB Type C connections for the microphones have software to add, you know, limiters and capacitors and and different EQs and stuff. And it's an argument, ongoing argument, where people say it's too little or wherever. It's not a, a really intuitive or a lot of ranging um, things that you can affect or wherever in the software. And then some people say it's perfect. I think for what the software is, it's decent or wherever for those who are just going to plug and play and don't want to fiddle around and get too, I would say, in depth with EQing and stuff like that. It's going to get the job done. And those microphones, you know, range for over $100 to, you know, around $80 or something like that. And since IS Tech don't have that, and you're going to have to do that in third party software, or any of your editing software and stuff like that, um, you know, that's kind of hard to justify this price. Again, you can get a refurbished Elgato microphone that's obviously not a dynamic microphone like this one or the Mayano ones. Um, and you can use, you know, the Wavelink software or whatever. And refurbished, you can find out for between $80 to $90 or whatever, or at least below $100. Again, renewed or refurbished, whatever you want to call it. And so it's again at that price point, you do have competing, I would say, competitors who are bringing a little bit more to the table than just including an XLR cable. Um, so again, you shop around, do your research and stuff like that as far as microphones go. But again, if you can find this for again between 50 and 60 bucks and you have somewhat of a muddier voice that has a little bit of bass to it and stuff like that, and you don't want to do too much EQ, maybe you have an NVIDIA, you know. GPU or something like that, and you can use NVIDIA Broadcast, and you can put a background removal or just a, I would say, slight noise gate or wherever within OBS or something, um, and just use a noise gate in Discord and stuff. This microphone's gonna sound good, I think, in my personal opinion. It's it's honestly not bad. This is really well done, honestly, in my opinion. Like I said, it's just priced a little bit too high. Uh, I don't know why it's a little bit too high. I've kind of talked about it in their in their microphone boom arm review um their prices or wherever on the website are a little bit too high versus what i've seen on amazon amazon seems like they keep on putting i would say deals and stuff so i'm gonna leave both i know they probably just want me to leave the website in the description but i'm gonna leave both in the description if it's not there you can always just you know obviously search it up on amazon but overall this microphone is really really well done but with that being said really good microphone especially for the first time Hopefully they continue to, you know, improve and bring out other ones. I do want to say quickly, though, within the USB type C uh, port cable or whatever, as far as using it, you do have gain control on the top of the microphone. So you have a plus and a, a negative. They're all capacitive mute buttons. If you hold down the microphone mute button right here, you will see the indicator for headphones and microphone or whatever switch between either one. So you know that you're adjusting your microphone uh, gain or your volume for your headphones. So it's clear indication or wherever I do like that. Um, maybe in the future, side thought, I just thought about it while I was recording this and um, maybe in the future, make this ring right here, RGB. You know, that I've seen that happening more and more with like the Fine Fine and the Mayano microphone having that ring or wherever as a RGB. 
you could do that that's something that people are doing or whatever nowadays but uh that's up to you you know uh i expect if that's what something that you want to do but just you know food for thought but overall fairly really really impressed with this microphone because again charging this stuff or whatever for this price points it's hard for me to say yes go out and get it it's a really good fantastic microphone i like the way it sounds especially for my voice yes it has a little bit of cons but those cons are nitpicky you know what i'm saying but overall again at this price point for 80 to 90 bucks i can't i just in my personal opinion i can't really justify it knowing the quality of microphones out there and it's not just from fine fine just other companies out there who have quality sounding microphones less than 80 bucks so it's up to you you know your use case scenario you know your budget and stuff like that that any of that stuff doesn't bother you there will be a link down in the description to amazon for this with an if uh it's going to be an affiliate link as well as a link to their website so you can check out all their products again it's a really good company i like what they're doing or wherever it's a pleasure to work with them and stuff they've always been nice and professional and stuff it's just like i said the price points just need to be brought down a little bit just 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 by a hair just like i said for the low profile boom arm in their video that i did a review on check that out there'll be a link in the description with that being said, if you are interested, like I said, in a sound comparison of this microphone to the other ones I have, check out that unlisted video down in the description and check out the playlist at the end of this video for all the other product reviews I have done. And I'll catch you guys in the next one. IX Tech, I'm thoroughly impressed. Keep up the good work. What were the prices? Just a little bit. That being said, I'll catch you guys in the next one. God bless you and yours. And deuces, everybody. Much love. Thank you.